So entropy is a property. And thus the value of the entropy of a system is fixed once the state of the system is fixed. So by specifying two independent intensive properties, fix the state for a simple compressed system. So it's very similar earlier, like if you were to go to the tables or use E's, you can actually find the value of the entropy of the system as you would find any other property. Entropy values can often be obtained from those tables. And then once the properties are known, right, once you know the entropy at state one and the entropy at state two, you can easily find the change in entropy of a system. And remember, a first or a second law analysis is just basically trying to find what the change of entropy of a system uh, is attributed to, right? So if you have the, if you wanted to go ahead and find the entropy change for the system, it's going to be basically as a, a result of entropy transfer to and from the system and the entropy generation. Like what we went over earlier, we were talking about that for a closed system, right? We have the entropy change is attributed to the entropy transferred by mass and the entropy generated. That would, for a closed system, that would all equate to what the change in entropy is. So if you were to go back and find the entropy at each specific state, you could find the entropy change of the system and find out what caused that entropy change. And it would be due to entropy transfer and entropy generation. And we're going to be dealing a lot also with things called TS diagrams. So temperature on the Y axis, temperature on the X axis. Um, and you would have a saturation curve, much like you would with a T nu diagram that we were dealing with in earlier chapters. So again, uh, this would be the liquid vapor mixture region. This would be the saturated vapor region. This would be the compressed liquid region. This would be the saturated liquid line. And this would be the saturated vapor line. Entropy will be used often, especially from this point on, when looking at processes. So entropy is commonly used as a coordinate on these diagrams. So again, this would be, for example, what we call a TS diagram. And this would be a TS diagram for water, where again, the constant pressure lines look much of the same as they did in T new diagrams. Uh, just as a quick example problem, uh, you're welcome to pause the video and to go ahead and define the entropy and or temperature of steam at each of the following states. So here we have five different states and you can go ahead and use ease or your tables just to get an idea of how to use uh, how to find entropy or use entropy to find different states. So if you're going to do that, you can go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so to fill in the blanks here, we can go ahead and uh, if you were to put in, look up 5 megapascals at 120 C, you would find that this is in the compressed liquid region. And you would end up with an entropy value of 1.523 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. For the second state here, at 1 megapascal and 50 C, again, you would have a compressed liquid state with an entropy value of 0.703 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. State three, at 1.8 megapascals and 400 degrees C, you would end up with a superheated state, superheated vapor state, and an entropy of 7.179 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. The next state, we have 40 kilopascals with a quality of 0.9. That would give us a temperature of 75.9 degrees Celsius and an entropy value of 7.005 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And the last state, um, you get 40 kilopascals, entropy value of 7.1794 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. That would give me an entropy value of 75.9 again with a quality of 0 0.93, which would be a saturated mixture. 
All right. Let's go ahead and uh, move on to, <clears throat> excuse me, an example problem. The example problem reads, an insulated piston cylinder device contains five, liquid, five liters of saturated liquid water at a constant pressure of 150 kilopascals. An electric resistance heater inside the cylinder is now turned on, and 2,200 kilojoules of energy is transferred to the steam. Determine the entropy change of the water. So we'll start off with a schematic. A schematic of a piston cylinder assembly. And there's an electric resistance heater that puts in 2200 kilojoules of energy. I'm going to go ahead and draw some assumptions. Number one, I'm going to assume the change in kinetic and potential energy of the system is zero. I'm going to assume that this piston cylinder assembly as stated in the problem is insulated, so there's no heat transfer. And I'm going to assume this process occurs slowly in a quasi-equilibrium manner. Now, this is a closed system. And if you remember, we talked about that the entropy change of a closed system, right, the entropy at state 2 minus the entropy at state 1 has to equal the entropy transfer by heat or the sum of the entropy transfer by heat. So I'll go ahead and just erase that and write it in summation form. So it has to equal the sum of all entropy transfer to and from the system plus the entropy generated, right? Again, this is saying that the change in entropy, what causes the entropy to change from a state two to state one is equal to the sum of the entropy transfer by heat plus the amount generated, right? That's for a closed system. If you th want to think about it this way, it's very much analogous to the change in energy of a system is equal to the energy in minus the energy out. So this is telling me that the change in energy of the system from state two to state one, that energy change is caused by energy transfer in and energy transfer out. Now the difference between this, which is a first law analysis, and this, which is a second law analysis, is that in a second law analysis, you have entropy generation, right? And there's no such thing as energy generation, or ener energy cannot be created or destroyed. So this term, S-gen, is very similar to um, entropy creation, right? That's what it is, it's entropy creation, actually. And then this is entropy, this is energy transfer by heat, work, and mass. And this is energy tra transfer out by heat, work, and mass. Well, actually, it's a closed system, so mass doesn't count. There's actually entropy transfer by mass, but we haven't gotten there yet. So we'll just call it entropy transfer by heat. And then uh, for energy, energy transfers by heat and work, entropy does not transfer by work. Entropy transfers by heat in a closed system. So the, very, uh, the idea of uh, the first and second law is similar. The difference is, is that entropy is created and energy cannot be created. Ener energy is converted. So if you look at this in our second law analysis, well, we have the change in entropy of the system is equated to the change in uh, the, the sum of all of the the, for this closed system, the change in entropy is equated to this, the sum of all of the entropy transferred by heat and the entropy generated. Now, since this is a adiabatic system, the change in entropy is solely due to the amount generated. So if we're going to go ahead and find the entropy change, we need two properties per state. Right? So if I want to get entropy to state 1, I need two properties state 1, and likewise to state 2. So let's go ahead and do that. For state 1, it tells us the pressure is 150 kilopascals, and it tells us that the quality is 0. It tells us it's, it's, it's liquid. So that will allow us to get the entropy pretty directly. We use E's or... We use E's or... um. Uh, the tables, you should be able to find two properties, one state. Now, if you want to get the change in entropy, 
right, we're going to need to know the mass times the change in specific entropy because that's what we're getting, specific entropy. And according to this, we're given that this there's five liters of liquid water. So if we're going to do that, we're going to have to get the specific volume to convert the uh, to convert the um, the volume into mass. So if we get the specific volume at state one point zero zero one zero five three meters cubed per kilogram, we can go ahead and based on the initial volume and the specific volume, we can compute the mass. And then we can go to state two. And we know the pressure at state two is equal to the pressure at state one. But if you think about it, we don't actually have a second property for state two. It gives us the fact that state one is at a pressure of 150 kilopascals and it's saturated liquid, but we don't get anything for state two. We don't know what, we don't have a second property. So the question is, is how do we get a second property? And the answer is that it is often necessary to couple a second law analysis with a first law analysis because the first law analysis will give you an unknown uh, that you will solve for an unknown that you need to finish the second law analysis. So let's try it. We do a set first law analysis. We get that for this system, we have electric work in. It's a piston cylinder device. So we have work out from the piston pushing against the atmosphere equals the change in internal energy of the system. So if I go ahead and take this first law analysis and I take the boundary work and put it to the other side of the equation, understanding that the boundary work is at constant volume, I get delta U plus P delta V. Understanding that delta U plus P delta V is equal to delta H. I can simplify this down that the electric work is equal to delta H or mass times the difference in specific enthalpy. Now, I went through that pretty quickly because I assume that this, this, this is chapter four type stuff, this first law analysis of closed systems. So I'm not going to take a lot of time to go through it slowly like we used to. I'm getting to the point now where I think we should be able to get through these first law analyses pretty quickly. Now, if you look at this, we have the electric work. It's given to us as 2,200 kilojoules. We have the mass that we just computed up here. Um, H2 could be my second property. I need H1, so I have to go back to state 1 and get H1, which ends up being 463.13 kilojoules per kilogram. Come back here, I can solve for this, right? So I get 2200 equals mass 4.75 times H2 minus H1, which is 467.13. This allows me to solve for H2, which is 930 kilojoules per kilogram. I take that plug it back up here as a second property for state two. And then from that, I can get my entropy at state two, which ends up being 2.64 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So with all those knowns, I can go back to my second law analysis, which is asking me to find the entropy change, which is mass times S2 minus S1. I plug in my numbers. I end up with 5.72 kilojoules per kilogram for this, for the um, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, sorry, or 